of their second year much better football team. On the other side of the field, Forrest Gregg, the Green Bay coach, their record 5-8-1. and one. It's been a case of oh so close, really only blown out of one ball game, but they are out of the playoffs for 1987. Now, what incentive do they have today? Well, you always have the incentive to win, but the final game of the season on a losing record and you're not going to the playoffs, if you can finish with a win, it just just changes your whole mental outlook for the offseason and gets the media off your back as well. This will be the 14th meeting between the two teams. The Saints won last year in Milwaukee. They intercepted seven Green Bay passes, but Green Bay still has a lead in the series, 10 games to three. Green Bay won the toss. They will receive. That means Morton Anderson is on to kick off. Brent Fullwood, deep man of three, and we're underway. We won't return that one. Not at all. <laughs> And that gets the crowd ignited as Anderson comes leaping off the field. <laughs> and the starting quarterback, a 10th round draft choice, a rookie out of Virginia, Don Mikowski, replaces Randy Wright, who's been quite ineffective in recent weeks. Here's the defense he'll face, Bruce Clark, Tony Elliott, and Jim Wilkes up front. Jim Wilkes has had a heck of a year. Jackson, Mills, Johnson, and Swilling at the linebackers. Mills in the Pro Bowl. And the defensive secondary, Dave Weimer, Van Jakes, Brett Maxey, and Gene Atkins. Dave Weimer's going to the Pro Bowl as well. Good defensive football team, as everybody knows. Mikowski, the rookie, making his fifth start of the season. Look for them to start out throwing a real high percentage pass completion type thing, too. Fumble on the first play. That's not the way to start out. The Saints lead the NFL in takeovers, turnovers. They're now plus 21 for the year. Pro bowler Sam Mills came up with it. Taking a look from the end zone, very many times when this happens, the quarterback pulls out just a little bit early. It looks like he was pulling away, and the offensive linemen were firing out. Obviously, no exchange. Mark Cannon is the center, and the mix-up between Cannon and Mikowski and Mills, that is the 21st, or plus 21 turnovers now for the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> Start out on the 19-yard line. You know, they're very efficient inside the 20-yard line as it is. They've been down there 53 times, scored 48 times, and what's a big thing is they scored touchdowns in more than field goals. Bobby Adair is the starting quarterback despite the knee injury last week in Cincinnati. First and ten from the 19. Ruben Mayer comes right and doesn't get much. Tackle was made by Mark Lee. Bobby Bear making his 12th start of the season today. And defensively, Green Bay will line up with Alfonso Character, Jerry Boyarski, and Robert Brown. They've done a good job. Not a great pass rushing group, but they've done a good job against the run. Anderson, Noble, Holland, and Harris, the linebackers. And the defensive secondary, Lee, Brown, Stills, and Mark Murphy. Second down and 10. Two wide receivers to the left. And Hebert back to throw. Into the flat, short flat. Mike Jones has it. Knocked out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Offensively, it's Hebert starting at quarterback for New Orleans. He is joined in the backfield by Reuben Mays. And Buford Jordan, the fullback, Eric Martin, and Mike Jones, the wide receivers. Ruben Mays is one of the class running backs in the NFL. Dombrowski, Edelman in the Pro Bowl, Hildenberg, Trapillo, the rookie, Stan Brock, and Hobie Brennan, the tight end. Two first round picks at the tackle position. And it will be third down and three. They love the tight end in close here. Well, they're in their shotgun formation now, so the big tight ends are out, Vern. Here comes the clip. Hey, there. He's a blue. They'll have to settle for a Morton Anderson field goal. Tried to delay underneath. Coming from the end zone, you'll see the defensive blitz. Now, linebackers up there. 59 John Anderson, normally playing the left outside on the center's nose, gets his hands up to try to deflect the pass. Did a good job there. Made the quarterback pull the ball down on the first look. Morton Anderson, 24 of 32 for the season, and hasn't missed inside the 40 since October of last year. Perhaps the best kicker ever in the NFL. This guy. <laughs> he's 
career inside the 40. That's a 31-yard field goal, and following the Mikowski fumble and the Sam Mills recovery, the New Orleans Saints take an early 3-0 lead. By the turnover all year, and what a, what a great way for them to start. You start out on your own 19-yard line, but that's really indicative of what's happened all season. But they earn those things. They take it away, and then they do a good job once they take it away. This time they settle for a field goal. They have a 3-0 lead, and Martin Anderson will kick it deep again to Brent Fullwood. Last one went uh, out of the end zone. This one fumbled in the end zone. They'll leave it there. Oh, boy. Number one team in the National Football League in turnovers, the New Orleans Saints. 46 takeaways, 25 giveaways, and plus 21. Burn, no, if you study the game critically, as I do with the computer, that computes to be worth about 85 points. That's a lot of points. There was a tiny scuffle near the goal line, but that's been broken up. Brent Fullwood was involved in that, the number one draft choice of the Packers. And now Green Bay will put it in play for the second play this afternoon. They fumbled the opening snap. Maybe the young center on that first one just wasn't concentrating on the little things first, you know. Here's the play they wanted to run last time. He had well, to throw that away. Let's check that Green Bay offensive backfield now. Don Mikowski is the starting quarterback. Kenneth Davis and Jesse Clark in the backfield. Philip Epps and Walter Stanley at wide receivers. I think they're a little disappointed in their running attack. The offensive line has had a good year overall, but they're a little disappointed in the production of the running backs. Rutgers, Moran, Cannon, Holston, Uther, and Ed West the tight end. Second and ten. Kenneth Davis. Out to the 24-yard line. You'll see here from the end zone a split back formation. Follow the fullback on the left side of your screen now as he leads here. That's Paul Ocaru. See him sitting. He's picking up the linebacker. Here he comes, Von Johnson, 53. He leads in, but he doesn't get him a knockdown, but Davis does a nice job of breaking his initial tackle. Isn't that a little wider split than one ordinarily sees? Well, a little bit wider, but not obviously wider. It's, uh, usually you move those guys around to facilitate a play you're going to run. Shotgun on third down. Mikowski going deep. Walter Stanley waits for it. Flank. Pass interference. And it was called on Milton Mack, the third-year man out of Alcorn State. Here is Fred Silva, our referee. Pass interference. Defense. Number 24. First down. Actually, the ball is underthrown, and that puts him in a bad position. See, now, right now, see, he's running right up into him. The receiver wanted to come back for the ball, and Milton didn't have much choice to run out into him. I gave Mack credit for a little more experience than he has. He's actually a rookie, a fifth-round draft choice. Not a third-year man. First and ten, 36-yard penalty. Davis goes right. Inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Maxey and Swilling with the tackle. The big Rich Moran, the offensive left guard, doing the pulling on the play. Number 57. You'll see him. See him cheated back there, Vern. See him pull. Now he's got Holstrom, 65, gets the kickout block. He's leading on up inside. Gets a nice block downfield. Gives him a little room. Davis running well. Third down. Second down. Davis to the 30-yard line. You know, Vern, sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you as a football team is have something positively happen in the very first part of the game, like something really go in your favor, and sometimes it takes the edge off the intensity of the game for you for a while. You know, and then you, it takes you a while to get back in. You start thinking you got a one after one snap. You know? <laughs> Jim Mora looks on. 
His team has won eight in a row, 11 and three for the year. And if they win this game and the Rams defeat the 49ers tonight, New Orleans is in as the division champion. First and ten. And Mikowski to throw on first down. Four man rush in the end zone. Man, open touchdown. Got it. Walter Stanley. That's a 29-yard touchdown toss. Don Mikowski to Walter Stanley. I'll tell you something. Now, here's Mikowski in the middle of your screen. He's going to be throwing off to the right-hand corner of your screen. Post pattern up inside David Waymer. Now, stop and think, Vern. They're the last in football in throwing touchdown passes. And their wide receiver core coming into this game that only throws, uh, only received seven touchdown passes. To start out like this, it's got to be a big boost. So following the fumble and the field goal, a big 36-yard pass in the field goal on Milton Max sends up the Packers. And Max then Mayhas kicks the extra point. Watch the rookie, the 10th round pick out of Virginia, his reaction after the TD pass. He's got to be pumped. That's his third touchdown pass this year. moment a very satisfied Don Mikowski sitting on the bench and the headset talking upstairs to the coach's booth 1140 to go first quarter 80 yards in five plays the big one was a 36 yard interference call took only 218 and Mikowski found Walter Stanley with a touchdown just the fact that they threw a touchdown pass has got to be stimulating well the passing game has been the just the nemesis of Green Bay all year oh they have not done a good job and, and it, I think it starts with Randy Wright you know, being a marginal guy anyway, experience-wise, and then showing up in training camp late, and then trying to be the quarterback, not good enough to do that. Mel Gray with a return. Fumble! Green Bay's ball! At the 40-yard line. What an unusual play. It just flew out of his grip. Usually when that happens, the helmet gets it when it pops up like that. He had a nice hole, and Mel Gray is as good a kickoff return guy as there is. You'll see him right in the middle of your pack. Here he is, he right to the right line there. No, he threw it out without contact. He got the elbow out away from the body, using his arm really for a balance, and flipped it right out himself. <laughs> from the 41, first and 10, Green Bay with a 7-3 lead. Turnovers are even, and one apiece. Kenneth Davis searches the left side this time inside the 40. It's Jesse Clark, the fullback. Don Mikowski threw that touchdown pass. This is his fifth start as a rookie. Replaced Randy Wright early in the season. And his team tied Denver. And then he hit 323 yards against Detroit. Sat down for a while, and his last few starts have been very ineffective. So he's off to a good start today. Having Philip Epps yeah, back as a receiver won't hurt him. Second down and eight. Quick screen, green side. Walter Stanley with a blocker in front. That's Boston. He's going to Stanley to score. Oh, they're going to penalize him. And shades of Kevin Wilhite, or Gerald Wilhite, rather, in Denver. Stanley does the backflip and may get uh, penalized for unnecessary exuberance or whatever they call it. The enthusiasm. Yeah. That penalty. For the demonstration, after the score, we're going to have a five-yard penalty assessing the kickoff. You're Boo. 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 That's nitpicking. <laughs> that's, that's the rule. Fred Silva's got to call it. The key to that play was a block by a wide receiver, Pat Scott, who went in motion. He broke that play wide open for him. Well, shades of a week ago for the New Orleans Saints when they fell behind Cincinnati 24-3. And just like that, they trailed 14-3 here in the Superdome. Watch Hallstrom and Scott lead the way for Walter Stanley. Man in motion, Pat Scott, 83. Now he will get the kick out block, the top left-hand corner of your screen. 
Now see, David Waymer will come up. Holstrom, 65, working out to lead. He gets the knockdown outside. Holstrom gets the seal block inside. There's the lane. There's the touchdown. Two touchdown passes. Mikowski to Stanley twice, and watch Stanley turn the flip. Football, basketball, and track. Must have been a high jumper, though. Watch this, Vern. <laughs> Judge for yourself if it's worth a five-yard penalty. He's a high school. He's got it. Maybe he was a diver as well. Huh? I think so. There's the strip kick. And the Saints will have terrific field position now at the 44-yard line. After the fumble... The Packers scored in two plays, 41 yards. Mikowski to Stanley with the backflip. But keep in mind that last week in Cincinnati, the New Orleans Saints fell behind 24-3 and scored 38 unanswered points. Bobby Abair back in the cockpit. First down and 10 from the 44. Abel wants to go deep, but he gets covered, and he centers to a short receiver at the 40. A lot of time to throw the football, Ben. Lonzel Hill makes the catch. Play action, pass protection, not only freezes the linebackers, but it also helps your offensive linemen as well. Now, see, look at all the time. Way too much time. They're only rushing three. That allowed the receiver Hill to work into the zone and make the reception of what we call a six pattern. Square in. That's a 15-yard gain. First down at the 40. Quick pitch. Toss to the right. Oh! A good is fell down by Alfonso Carriker behind the line of scrimmage. Very nice play by Alfonso Carriker. You can see that Carriker represent a character defensive team because they play hard. Last week was the only week that Forrest and his coaching staff felt that the Green Bay Packers didn't play real hard. Other than that, he says they have played hard all year, especially on defense. That is Alfonso character and not Jim Mora. <laughs> Second down and 11. Four man rush, A Bear in a little bit of trouble. It's thrown. The game is last year. Jerry Boyarski, who is working against Joel Hilgenberg today. Boyarski, just a delightful young guy. He's a character. I asked him last night who's the best center he played on. He said, Coach, I kicked all their butts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he is in the grass. There he is, working back up inside there. Yeah, he's in the grass, definitely. Good call. Saints won't agree, but it was a good call. Under the interpretation of the rule, there's Jerry Boyarski. Let's see a piece of work from Scott, Pennsylvania. Coaches love to coach those kind of guys because they're givers. Third and 18. 14 to 3, Green Bay leads. Has momentarily stunned this crowd. Hey there, throws short, and the hill to the 40. 35, flag is down. That might keep the drive alive. Because the tackle was made short of the first down. Personal foul, flipping. That will not keep the drive alive. Offense, personal foul, flipping, 15 yards. Still third down. I was watching Mark Lee, the quarterback of Green Bay, react to the penalty, and I think the clip may have been perpetrated against him. I think it was on Mike Jones, number 86. Coming from the right side, there's Mike Jones working back in the pattern. Now he sees the, the move there. He gets him right in from behind. Definitely a block from behind, but I'll tell you, didn't make much contact. And it was Mark Lee who was the victim of that uh, that foul. There is Mike Jones, the wide receiver. So the penalty puts the ball back at the 50-yard line. It'll be third down. Third and 20. It's a long ways to go. But, you know, with this kind of kicker, the, the kind of kicker that New Orleans has, they don't have to get the first down to get in the field goal. Now Forrest Gregg is arguing about... Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
we finally got that straight away. They're going to refuse the penalty. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I thought so. Yeah. Fourth down. It's fourth down instead of third. That was the third down play. So if you take the penalty, and they decline the penalty. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah, sure, they just declined the penalty. Yeah. So by declining the penalty, it makes it a fourth down, and Morton Anderson is on to try a 52-yard field goal. He is not kicking from outside the 50 as well. He's one for five this year in his career. He's 11 for 22. This is an interesting decision for Forrest Gregg. It would have been third and 20 from the 50. Yeah, I just... Number one, Green Bay. And the Green Bay Packers have called timeout to discuss There's the confusion here. The pass to Lonzel Hill resulted in the ball being down at the 35. There was a clip on the play. By accepting the penalty, it would have made it third and 20. By, by declining the penalty and accepting the play, it makes it fourth and five. But that's, that's his field goal range for this kicker. For Morton Anderson. I really think they made a mistake. They made a mistake by impulsively the defensive player, I think it was character, got up right away and said, we'll take the penalty. Mm -hmm. And the then they had a session on the sideline that said, no, we don't. We want it for 35. Now they're questioning themselves. Well, they had to call timeout, Dick, because they had and 12 men on the field. Two. They had a punt return man who was drifting back to the five-yard line. <laughs> so when we get back to play, Anderson will have a chance to kick his second field goal. This Morton Anderson practices on the practice field, kicking between goalposts only eight feet wide, rather than uh, 18 feet wide. You know, and you just think that gives him a, a psychological, psychological advantage when he shows up to the stadium and he sees those great big wide goalposts. It, it's like a baseball batter swinging a leaded bat, bat before right, he goes up to, to face the pitcher. Morton Anderson getting ready to try the field goal. Doubleheader day on CBS, and next up, the Chicago Bears against the Los Angeles Raiders. 52-yard field goal. He's certainly capable of making this, but he, he's in a slump from outside the, uh, in that outside 50 area. wonder about the decision to take the play instead of the penalty because it would have been third and 20 from the 50. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that either, but Morton Anderson here is the number one field goal kicker in the National Football League. This guy right here. Distance wise, kickoff wise, mental toughness wise, this guy is the best. And he is shouting hallelujah in one of the six languages he speaks. And he's reacting a little stronger today, I think, than just the normal situation because he really felt that he was having trouble outside that 50-yard line. That one's good from 52, second of the game for Morton Anderson. And 112 points in his strike-shortened 87 season now. And he's been over 100 each of the last three years. He's in the Pro Bowl again for the third straight year. I wonder how much kicking through that eight or nine foot goal post rather than the 18 foot six inch goal post helps him. I would think it'd be terrific. Now Jim Moore brought that with him from uh, Philadelphia Star, Baltimore Star team. They use that principle in training their kickers. So, it, it, you know, of course, Morton Anderson's always been a good one, but maybe it's helped him. Anderson will kick off again, 14 to six now with 8.10 to go in the first quarter. Look at that kickoff. See, that really helps your defense. Well, I guess. We're live in the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. 68,000 plus have jammed their way in. Fourth consecutive sellout for the Saints. But New Orleans has fallen behind. Don Mikowski fumbled the opening snap. The Saints recovered, kicked a field goal to take a 3-0 lead. Green Bay came back on a Mikowski pass to Walter Stanley of 29 yards to go on top 7-3. to three. 
recovered a fumble on the kickoff and went 41 yards. It was Mikowski to Stanley again to make it 14 to 3. And then just moments ago, Morton Anderson kicked a 52 yard field goal to save the margin for 14 to 6. First and 10, Green Bay. A little cross talk action. And Ricky Jackson shows a little bit of emotion. Number 57. Ricky Jackson had a heck of a game last week. He had eight tackles and three sacks and two forced fumbles. So he was really playing hard. Someone had to do it last week for him to make that kind of a comeback. He's also mad because he didn't make the Pro Bowl. <laughs> I tell you, when you start spreading the fame of your linebacker core over four people, it's harder to make it. The only one guy's going to make it this year was Mills. He's yep. been there before, though. Second down, nine. Draw play. On a redrawing. Pat Swilling and Ricky Jackson collaborate for that tackle. And it'll bring up third and eight. The Saints defense has improved tremendously on third down defense. Last year they were 24th in football. This year they're second. Why are they a better team? That's one of the answers. Shotgun formation for the Packers. High snap. Mikowski gets away from Frank Warren. If he gets a block, he might get it. Yeah, I think he made it. Where's the spot? Right at the 30, and I don't know. That right foot is going to, that's going to be short, Dick. Yeah, he didn't make it. By a couple of inches. Right off the bat, the play started negatively. Watch the quarterback. Rakowski gets a high snap. Now that distracts you right there. Now he gets a hard outside rush. He decides to flush outside. Now he becomes the ball carrier. More often than not, they're going to execute the old slide into second base. He's going for the first down. Good spot. He definitely didn't make it. And Don Bracken comes on to front. Bill Gray, who fumbled the kickoff five minutes ago, is back to return it. It's the number one punt return in the National Football League, Mel Gray. 15.2 average. He waits at the 27. Excellent punt. The kind of punt you like to return, though. It's not in the air very long. with the stop, a 27-yard return. Burn many times when the ball spirals tightly and goes a long ways, but it's spiraling tightly like that. It gets there quickly, see? And it doesn't hang in the air, and it makes it tough for the coverage. Now watch the wall set to the right side of your screen. See, he outkicked that coverage with that beautiful so-called spiral punch. Sometimes they're better off just wobbling down there. Puts the coverage people under a lot of pressure. Really a good point. It's the tight spiral that, that makes it quicker. And if it's a little bit low, it really is. In. That was a 48-yard punt, but 27 on the return. First down from the 49-yard line. 14 to 6 with 6.24 to go. First quarter. Up the middle. going straight ahead out of the deep eye, offset back. Here he is, getting it very deep. Now he can read the point of attack. You see him stutter step there, Burn. He finds the daylight, good blocking at the point of attack. And they say he's been in a slump, but he really hasn't. He's sharing the running responsibility with Dalton Hillard, and they both can't make 100 yards a game. Now Barry Word comes in as the fullback, the short man in the eye. First down and 10, New Orleans. No flags, the defense got back. That was close. Indianapolis has a chance to win the AFC East. Let's find out what's happening. Here's Brent Musburger. All right, Vern, here's a playoff update in the AFC. The Colts strike on Dickerson's touchdown. Igwe Buke nails his field goal at 7-3. Now, elsewhere in the AFC right now, Oilers lead the Bengals 13-7 moments ago. The Chiefs have kicked a field goal, and they lead the Hawks. Let's go back to Vern. It's all going to be straightened out by tonight or perhaps tomorrow night when New England and Miami play. Second down. Hey there, right box. Oh, good hit. Cliff Benson 
That's only his second catch since joining the Saints. He was with the Atlanta Falcons for a few years, caught 33 passes for them, but he was released, he was waived, and here he is playing. He's the big blocking type tight end at 240 pounds. When, he, when he's in there and they have Kobe Brenner at 245 pounds, it's almost because they have two more tackles in the ball game. Well, you talked about the improvement of the Saints defensively on third down. Offensively, they've improved as well. Oh, they've gone from 28th in the league last year to number five in the league this year in converting to first down. Again, a reason for being more efficient football team. From the 29, A Bear in the shotgun. They're Blitz coming after the safety. Into the flat, Dalton Hilliard. Short. And let's see if we're going to see Morton Anderson again. Or is it Brian Hansen who'll come on? It'll be fourth down. It'll, It'll be fourth. Anderson. It'll be Anderson. Well, he's, uh, he had plenty of leg on that 52-yarder. You did. Another reason the Saints are better. Morton Anderson has kicked more field goals successfully than any kicker in the National Football League this year. And the defense, the opponents kicking field goals against him, have kicked the few. They have allowed the fewest field goals to be kicked successfully against him. That is a wide spread right there. 48-yarder this time. He's 26 of 34 for the season. 27 of 35. He's on a streak today. And he's already the most popular athlete in New Orleans. 14 to 9. So good about me. The Aints are a distant memory now. The Saints fans have filled the Superdome again. I've come down here a number of times as the head coach of Philadelphia, and you look around and see these people sitting with bags on their head. And, right. Oh, my God. I felt so sorry, really, for the coaching staff and, and that football team. But it's not like that anymore. Anderson. This one will be returned. Fred Fullwood. 21-yard line. You know, many times... A kickoff burn. Your own people get in your way. You see that he couldn't get stretched. He couldn't get running. He was just trying to get out of the way of his own people. You know, talking about the bad years in New Orleans, and it was only seven years ago they were one and fifteen. Had a chance to chat with General Manager Jim Finch yesterday, and he was very gracious in talking about Bum Phillips and the residue of talent that they had when he and Moore came in. There was some talent here. No, oh, there was. But Philly Kuhari, the personnel director, has done a real good job of bringing people not only from the USFL, but through the draft with 25 new guys. But you're right, Finks is a class guy and has done an excellent job wherever he's been. First down and 10. Green Bay leading 14-9. Mikowski with a play fake and a deep pass. Man open, Walter Stanley. That's his third grab. Two have gone for touchdown. <laughs> Morton Anderson out of Stewart, Denmark, by way of Michigan State. That's Brian Hansen right there. That is not Morton Anderson. He's stuck in the middle there. You can't see him, Vern. He's leaning forward. He doesn't know we're talking about him. <laughs> there, there he is. is. Hey, Morton. 32. He's got 27 field goals for the year instead of 32. And there's Kenneth Davis to the 41-yard line. There's a better shot of Morton Anderson. He had, they had a big poster down here of him. You know, the big sort of a pinup poster. And they said it was really a hot-selling item. Well, he and Brian Hansen about three years ago recorded a rock tune. Didn't sell in Memphis, but it became number one in New Orleans for a while. <laughs> He's very given to social causes. He's an extremely popular athlete here in New Orleans and all of Louisiana. I tell you, that's one guy the head football coach would love. Mikowski will run. All the way to the 27th. And it brings to mind something that Lee Remmel, the Packer Public Relations Director, said last night, and Lee has been a part of the Packer organization since the Lombardi days, that Don Mikowski is probably the best athlete that they've ever had at quarterback. Well, remember, at the University of Virginia, he said they were running options. So he is a combination runner and passer. Now, in pro football, you don't see a lot of this, but it shows his running skills right now. You don't expect your quarterbacks to be able to run quite. See him move his feet there nicely? It comes from his option football experience. 
That's a gain of 33 yards. First down at the 27. Dennis Davis. Inside the 25 to the 23, Sam Mills, the 5'9 all pro linebacker. Did he stack him up? Did he stack him up? He can really hit you. Of course, he doesn't have to bend over very far to get right at the number high. He said all his career being short is hurting. But he now feels being short and playing well, people remember him. Oh, he's the short linebacker. When it comes time to vote for the Pro Bowl, they're more apt to remember who he is. Right. <laughs> and he's in the Pro Bowl this year. He deserves it. Second and six. 14 to nine with 113 to go in the first quarter. Mikowski has gone for two touchdown passes, has a lot of time, and Jesse Clark, the fullback, over the middle. That's the first down at the 12-yard line. Ricky Jackson and Sam Mills make the stop. Well, you hear a lot of talk about teams in the final game who are out of the playoffs packing their bags and heading home. These guys have come with a lot of incentive, it appears. It's, uh, again, a credit to Forrest Gregg and his coaching staff. We noticed that a few weeks ago when we were in their locker room during their 49er game. It was the best atmosphere I'd ever been in in, in terms of a locker room that had been a losing locker room. They were positive and knew they were going the right direction. Could be the final play of the first quarter. Jesse Clark down to the eight-yard line. Two touchdown passes from Mikowski to Walter Stanley. Account for the 14 points Green Bay has scored. Three Morton Anderson field goals for New Orleans. There have been two turnovers, a fumble on either side of the ball. If Green Bay can come up with a quarterback like Mikowski or right before the training camp on type and end up being good enough, their defense is good enough to be a playoff caliber team. That's the end of the first quarter. We now pause for this word. We are located by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. Toyota, setting the standard for quality and value. And by U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. Back for quarter number two, the Saints trail 14 to 9, and the Packers are threatening again. Vern Lundquist along with Dick Vermeil. And once again, if New Orleans wins this game and the Rams beat the 49ers, the Saints are in as the NFC Division, Western Division champions. They are in as a wild card team in the host spot in that game, regardless. Second down and seven. Quick toss, fade pattern, left side, and Stanley can't hang on. It's knocked away by Van Jakes. Van did an awfully nice job there. He's played good defense for him all year at the right corner position. Had three pass interceptions. Take a look at the end of that football play. Timing is so critical. See the ball on the left screen coming down. He gets there right in time to bat it away. He sort of just sort of pushed that ball away rather than use his hand. Almost looked like he did intercept it. Third and seven from the nine. Three wide receiver set for the Packers. And the shotgun formation. Draw play, Jesse Clark. They'll have to settle for a try for three. Shotgun formation, Vern. That's trying to get the pass rush upfield. Everybody anticipating pass and then run the draw inside the rush. You can see Clark, number 75, being turned to the outside. Here comes Waymer, number 44, comes over and makes a tackle. Jesse Clark on the draw. That'll bring on Max Zendejas, once a fourth-round pick of the Cowboys. Later with the Redskins and a replacement player who started during the replacement game just from 24 yards out. You know, New Orleans has blocked three field goals this year. Oh. This one's good. And that extends the Green Bay lead to 17 to 9. First minute of the second quarter. It's full game time, and later this week, Dick and I will be down in Jacksonville for the Mazda Gator Bowl. What a game that ought to be. South Carolina and LSU. South Carolina, run and shoot. <laughs> That's right. I can't wait to hear you dissect that offense. <laughs> Joe Morrison's bunch and Mike Archer and LSU at 9-1-1. One, one. That's at 2.30 Eastern time on New Year's Eve afternoon. And the next day, Notre Dame and Timmy Brown make a visit to 
Dallas to take on the Aggies of Jackie Sherrill. The Cotton Bowl game live at 1.30 Eastern time, New Year's afternoon. There's a real thing. Huh? Isn't she, though? Future sensation. That's <laughs> terrific. <laughs> <laughs> 49ers are at home against the Rams later tonight. If they win that game, they have the host spot throughout the playoffs. If they lose it and the Saints win this one, then New Orleans would have the host spot throughout the playoffs. The Redskins, by virtue of their victory yesterday, are at home for their first game in the playoffs. Chicago will have to travel. They played the Raiders in our second game this afternoon. And how about Minnesota with that loss yesterday? Now, if Minnesota, if, if St. Louis, rather, beats the Cowboys today and they lead 3-0, then the Vikings are out of the playoffs. It's now 7-3, Dallas in the second quarter. So the Vikings can do not now but sit at home in Minneapolis-St. Paul and hope the Cowboys can do the job they couldn't do. <laughs> was that Stan Brock? I think it was. Yeah, it was Stan Brock, and he's the... You would not want him carrying the ball. He's a big old offensive tackle. He's one of the guys, Dick, that's been around here for eight years, lived yeah. through the 1-15 and 15 season, and I've gotten to know him pretty well. I talked with him yesterday, and I said, what does it mean? He said, you know, it's funny. Everybody is asking me what it means to be in the playoffs. I don't know. I still haven't been in the playoffs, and I can't <laughs> wait to get there. Yeah, I tell you this, if they can get the home field advantage, it makes it is more than just a home field advantage. If the 49er gets it, uh, if the 49ers get it, I think they have the best chance of going all the way. If these guys get it, then they have the best chance of going all the Kicking way. Kicking team number 39. Offside. Five yards. So we will kick it again, and Stan Brock's return will be going right down forever in the official statistics. I wonder why they're uh, squib kicking. It can't be just total fear of the Mel Gray, number 87, who is a sensational kickoff return man. He returned 101 yards last year but he hasn't done that this year. He's always a threat, but squib kicking over the years normally presents the offensive team with better field position. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the Cotton Bowl game, Notre Dame and Timmy Brown can tell you about that. Yeah. When they kicked away from Brown, and uh, the Irish kept getting the ball around the 40-yard line. Here's Zenday Hunt. Squibs it again. And Brock will let it go this time. Dalton Hilliard. And there you are. They're after the 33. Yeah. Dallas has that lead over St. Louis. Let's find out how they got it. Here's Brent Musburger. Well, Vern, here's exactly how they got it. On a long drive, Herschel Walker finished off the Cardinals with his bolt into the end zone, and it's 7-3. Cowboys over the Cardinals. Cardinals have to win. Let me point out what happened in this Houston score. The Oilers did score on a blocked punt. It was called back, holding on a blocked punt, so they remain tied at 7 in the second quarter. And let's send you back now to Vernon Dick. All right, Brent, busy day, and we'll be going back to Brent periodically throughout the afternoon to keep you posted on uh, all of these meaningful games. In the meantime, Alvin Cole, linebacker out of Tennessee, was injured on the kickoff. He was the number one pick in 1985. You know, he broke his ankle his senior year in college and only played three games and still ended up being a number one pick. Cole's on the Saints bench. And in the meantime, we'll go back to the field play and get an update on that injury as soon as we can. Bobby Hebert, 5 of 6 for 39 yards in the first quarter in a minute. And the Saints are down 17 to 9. Single setback and two wide receivers, two tight ends this time. John Price has come in with Hobie Brown. And a play fake from Hebert. There's the tight end, Hobie Brown. The drop. All the way to the 49-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. That two tight end formation, two wide receiver, one back in the backfield has been very effective. Now the tight end to the right side of your screen, Hobie Brenner will cross and he'll come under Tice, 82 to the left corner of your screen. He'll catch the ball. Now watch Tice at the top, wheel back, get the block on Tim Harris, 97, and give him at least another 10 or 15 yard play. Good job, good execution. And actually those plays are designed like that. 19 yards on the play, first down 10. That looked like an option play at first. <laughs> and Ruben Mays gets the handoff. Bring you up to date on what's happened so far. Walter Stanley, 87 yards and two touchdown catches. Don Mikowski, four of six, has thrown those two. And for the Saints, Morton Anderson, three field goals, including efforts of 48 and 52 yards. It'll be second down and nine, New Orleans. Saints have won eight in a row. It all began 
on November 1st, All Saints Day, the 21st birthday of this organization when they defeated Atlanta 38 0. They haven't lost since. Oh, great block. Oh, another great block. Oh, there were a couple of them on that play. And Ruben Mays is the beneficiary. Toby Brenner, the big left tight end, in this case, the left side of your screen. Watch the block. Boom, he just gets him hooked right there, gets it walled off, walled off the inside pursuit, then gets another block by Mel Bray, number 37 downfield. Excellent blocking by the tight end to the right there. Here he is. He gets out there and gets a nice block on John Anderson. Gets him knocked off the ball and stick and stays. Excellent job by Hobie Brennan. Steve Court also got a good block. Here's Mays bobbling the pick. First down at the 28. Just a tight offensive formation, short yardage, wing back to the right, toss deep in the backfield. They're thinking about one yard. Now, Buford Jordan, 23, gets the kick out. The Mark Lee, 22. Brett Mack, no, that's, excuse me, that's Ken Stills, has to come over and make that tackle. When you break out in a short yardage play like that, your tight end and wing back do an excellent job of blocking. Those are the keys. If you can get those guys shut off inside, you can get that good first down and more. 11-16 to go, first and 10, 17-9 to score. Green Bay leads it. Right there with a play fake. One hopper. Worth from the bench is that Alvin Tolles has a sprained knee, and it's questionable whether he'll be back. Here's a guy that was questionable whether he'll be back this week, and now here he is playing. He had some incentive. Yes, he had 45 cc's of blood taken off his knee on Monday. So there's something wrong, but they won't worry about it until it's all over. It's also his 12th start, Dick. And yeah. in his contract, his 12th start of the season guarantees him what he told me was a huge amount of money. Huge! Huge. <laughs> As in a lot of six figures. <laughs> He's deserved it this year. Pressure. Hey, there gets rid of it. Nice job. Kobe Brennan. First down. This time, focus your attention on the quarterback because he's going to throw this under pressure. Now, watch him step up inside. They're banging him around there. There he earns his bonus burn. Now he gets Brenner over there, who was an out receiver underneath a deeper pass. Good quarterback. He's worth the bonus when he can do those kind of things. Some quarterbacks follow the olive when they get guys close enough to smell their breath. Well, they get, they're in trouble, eh? Ruben the 15-yard line. They fell behind 14-3 in the first half of the first quarter. They fought back with uh, two field goals for Morton Anderson to make it 14-9. And then Zendejas put Green Bay further in front, 17-9. That's where we stand now. 10-08 to go. which he probably didn't, but, you know, he's such an intense guy. You go, I've done it. I'd get so fired up or mad, you make a decision when you're in that frame of mind and you foul yourself up. Chances are the decision was made for all the right reasons. Wyzoon is out. It'll be second down and seven from the 15. Dalton Hilliard in the lineup now is the lone setback. They go to the double tight end set again, and they love the tight ends in short. This time it'll be Hilliard. Good defense by Timmy Harris. Timmy Harris was questionable whether he'd even play today. He's been a little bit limpy, but he's playing hard. And Forrest Gregg said he'll play as long as he can. Hilliard is a guy, look at Timmy Harris, Hilliard's a guy that Jim Moore is very pleased with in recent weeks. Well, you know, he's really productive. I asked him why he's so much better this year than he was last year. He says, Coach, last year I was late in signing the contract and getting there. He says, I'm so much more relaxed now and more confident in the offense, and, and I stayed here all in the offseason really got physically prepared. See what he's done in the last four games, 246 yards, shotgun on third and seven. Four receivers, a there left. Mark Patterson, number 88. That's only his eighth of the season. A bear got up limping a little bit that time. Ezra Johnson knocked him down, number 90. Shotgun formation, deep snap. 
You hear the linebackers coming, safety's coming. Here it is. He gets knocked down right there. The ball, perfect timing, going outside and away from the defender. Just where it had to be, Mark Patterson makes a nice catch. Got a dandy block from Dalton Hilliard to give him just enough time to make the throw. Patterson goes to the right side. Lonzel Hill is in tight. They like to throw the ball to the tight end down inside this area. Play fake, a bad. In the grass, intercepted, and that'll be wiped out. Brett Silva had now the, now the Saints fans are gonna love the in the grass rule. He was trying to go to John Tice, number 82. Alfonso Carriker had the interception, but Silva had blown the whistle correctly. Direct your attention to the right side of the screen, number 82, John Tice. He's in there right. Now watch him come across. Excuse me, he's coming from the left side. There he is, both tight ends. Brenner to the right, Tice to the left. They wanted to get the ball in. Here he is, definitely in the grass. Two good calls today in regards to that type of foul. Not foul, but <laughs> tackle. Second down as well. May tackle behind the line. Robert Brown makes this stop. Number 93, it'll be third down and 15. Robert Brown is a very good run defender. Average pass rusher, but he can stop the run. We chatted with Jim Mori yesterday. He was worried about the, the running game, said it hasn't been terribly effective recently. Well, you know what happens to that is people see you run the ball all year. They start stunning into the running formations that you use and taking away the things you do well all year. They'll come back, though, once they get in the playoffs. Third and 15. Hey there. Incomplete. Intended for Lonzel Hill, who runs up the tunnel. And that will call for Morton Anderson for the fourth time in the game. You usually get your running game going again by disguising formations. But see, here they are at the end of the season. They've been disguising the formations a little bit more each week. And by the end of the season, you run out of disguises and you still have to whip them physically. You know? <laughs> Anderson already three for three. And for the season now, 27 for, of 35. This will be a 32-yard field goal. Sid and Gilman used to say to me, Vern, no matter how many disguises, whatever you do, you still got to block. <laughs> you still got to block. Anderson's a perfect four for four. And once again, the Green Bay lead is five. Packers lead again at five now after Anderson's field goal, 7.31 to go, but... You said at the outset that uh, Forrest Gregg's team had an incentive to play well, and they have. Oh, yeah. I mean, they are not a winning football team, but they're not that far away. And uh, they've made the improvement already in this ball game that they had to make. Production out of the offense. Playoff teams on defense in the last 10 years have given up 18.1 points. These guys have given up 19.1. They're not that far away. There's Anderson nine yards deep in the end zone again. And the Packers will start from the 20th. Still out crowd, fourth in a row in New Orleans. And the Saints, who are in the playoffs for the first time in their 21-year history, trail now 17-12. They fell behind 14-3 on two quick strikes from Mikowski to Walter Stanley. They've come back with three additional Morton Anderson field goals. And we have 7.25 to go first half. Vern Lundquist and Dick Vermeil. Dalton Hilliard, or rather uh, Brent Fullwood in the lineup now. Behind Don Mikowski, who's getting his fifth start in a Green Bay uniform. This is Fullwood. 25-yard line, maybe just short of that. Here's the old Green Bay sweep being run by the Green Bay Packers. Both offensive guards, 57 Moran, Holstrom 65. Good block by Ed West, 86, at the point of attack. Good block right there by Jesse Clark, 33. The old Green Bay sweep being run by Green Bay. That's funny. It didn't look like Dale Gillingham and Fuzzy Thurston. Uh -huh. Second and five. Bullwood lined up as a wide receiver. Flag is down. He was in motion. Catches the pass. Oh, it wasn't an incomplete. It was incomplete. 
Austin will rest to the Saints as Bullwood started upfield prematurely. Pat Swilling, number 56, the fine outside linebacker, was right in Makowski's face and ended up putting him down. Listen to me. I was dead wrong. It wasn't Fullwood. It's an offside against the Saints. Thought I saw him start upfield. So the option will rest with Green Bay. Defense number 44. Lining up in the neutral zone. He's offside. He's the corner playing bump and run coverage. You know how that happens? He was on a wide receiver, a flanker back, back off the line of scrimmage, and he's working up to crowd him to get a good hit on him as he comes off the line of scrimmage, and he actually crossed the line of scrimmage. Doesn't happen very often, but that's normally the situation when it does happen. David Weimer has one of the more unusual stances you'll ever see among a defensive back. He likes to really crouch. Yeah. Gets way deep in his stance. Look at him get down. Now he's back to ball. Eps in motion. Mikowski puts it on his hip, and he'll run. First down, Green Bay at the 42. You know, the last game of the season, and you're not going to play a game next week, and you've been losing, you might have your quarterback run a few plays like that. You know, if you get bumped or bruised, you'll be back by next year. A couple weeks ago when we were up in Green Bay, Vern Mikowski told me, you know, the whole time I'm in Virginia, we ran the options. He says, I lead. Now they're running a, a pro pass off. <laughs> Other scores. Look at Kansas City and Seattle in a scoring duel. First and 10, Green Bay. Six minutes to go first half, and the Packers lead 17 to 12. Fullwood. Oh, good tackle. Take him down at the 46-yard line. Brent Fullwood, the number one pick in 1987. He had a little bit of an ankle problem most of the year. And that, if you start out with an ankle problem, there's no way you can get enough rest that it ever becomes 100%. You just have to play on it. Well, and, and candidly, I think he's got a little growing up to do. Oh, yeah. Most most college football players, especially number one picks, do. I mean, they've been babied and pampered and told how super they are. Now they're in a league where everyone's just as good. Second down and five. Five, 23 to go. Mikowski still has it. Bad bad. Bruce Clark, number 75. Out of Penn State. He's been in the Pro Bowl before. Bruce Clark at six foot three. Number 75 coming in from the left side of your screen. He gets good penetration. Forward picks him up in the middle. Then he gets back up, and there is Frank Warren making the play, number 73. Frank Warren's a lot taller than Bruce Clark, so he has a little bit more of a reach. It was Frank Warren instead of Bruce Clark. And it'll be third and five. Mikowski deep, Stanley open for the moment. Reggie Sutton just activated yesterday. He's been a month on the non-football illness reserve list. Here he is. He should not allow that man the inside re release like that if he's not getting inside help. He's doing a good job of tracking him, but the ball is thrown a little bit short there, and Sutton gets his hands on it. Sutton has a lot of talent. If he goes ahead and takes advantage of it, he'll be a good football player. That brings on Don Bracken for the second time in the first half. Nice punch. Very high. Turns over. Oh, takes a Green Bay bounce. And that will be down at the eight-yard line. 4.55 to go in the first half. Saints' only lead was 3-0. The U.S. is going to win a gold medal for the first time. No surprise for the final uh, weekend of regular season, but there's a confusion in the AFC playoff picture. Cleveland, Denver, and Seattle are in. Seattle, however has to win if they have any hopes of winning their division championship. Indianapolis is in as a division champion if they win. Those on the bubble who cannot control their destiny include Miami, San Diego, and New England. We'll update you on significant scores after the first New Orleans play here with just under five minutes to go. Ruben May, I really enjoy watching him run, how he widens that base and he sets up a block and he darts to the outside. If your feet are close together, you can't do that. Kansas City currently leading Seattle by seven in the second quarter. 
Cincinnati trailing Houston, and the Oilers control their destiny. If they win, they're in as a wild card. They lead 14 to 7, and Indianapolis can win the AFC East with a victory today. They lead Tampa Bay by four. Here, the score is 17 to 12, with 4:49 to go in the first half. Third and second and three. Pull back. Buford, Jordan, first down. Cowboys trying to deny St. Louis the playoff hit. Let's see what's happening. Here's Brent Musburger. Yes, Vern, in that battle for the last spot in the NFC, the St. Louis Cardinals were driving for the go-ahead touchdown. Lomax to Novacek, but he fumbled. And Scott recovered for the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys still lead it 7-3. Back to Vern. All right, Brent. If St. Louis wins, they're in as a wild card. And the Vikings are sitting at home watching that game. Flag down. Boy, Jerry Boyarski appeared to jump. Now, was he drawn? That's his claim. I don't know. They're going to check it out. But he really went off hard. It wasn't one of, oops, excuse me type things. He really went off. Somebody must have moved. Here's Fred Silva. Defense, nose guard, encroachment. Encroachment? Go first down. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's more than encroachment. The bottom right-hand corner of your screen, this is more than encroachment. He goes back, takes a pretty good shot. He thought somebody moved. That often amazes me why a nose guard, you know, moves when the ball doesn't move. He was once a fifth-round draft choice of these same New Orleans Saints. Right. And says he has a lot of close friends who are still members of this ball club. He and Hobie Brenner are particularly good friends. First and five. Patrick Scott in motion. Up the middle with a raise. Fumble! Green Bay recovers. Unless the play was ruled down. Uh, I think that's a fumble. If the play was ruled down by contact, it will not be reviewed by the instant replay officials. Here's Fred Silva. Yep. The headlinesman, Terry Kierke, number 72, ruled Ruben Mays down. Bob Brown, number 93, got a real nice charge up inside there. Ruben Mays cut back. You see the ball in the right arm right now. There it is right now. He's going underneath. He's going down. He's down. He's, He's down. down. He's down. No fumble. Good call. And we criticize the Waffen. Let's praise that good call was made by Terry Kierke, the headlinesman. First down and 10, New Orleans, 3.25 to go. Dalton Hilliard. Tackled from behind by Robert Brown. Sell out in New Orleans, but it's been kind of a quiet crowd so far. The Saints fell behind 14 to 3 on two touchdown tosses. Mikowski to Stanley. They have gotten back in the game with four field goals from Morton Anderson. It's 17-12 right now with 2.55 to go in the first half. The Saints going after their ninth victory in a row. They trailed at halftime last week in Cincinnati 24-10 and won it big 41-24. Hebert lobs it out. Dalton Hilliard. Going to the first down at the 43. Robert Brown with the tackle. Having the ability to make a person miss, does that make a difference? Otherwise, you have to execute everything perfectly, make everybody block perfect and all that. It's not the case when you have a guy that can make somebody miss. Dalton Hilliard, number 21. See, now watch him check down. Check out of there. Here he goes. Now watch him make a miss. He gets that left foot down. Now he gets the five to six more yards. This Robert Brown, 93, is playing one heck of a football game. We will not get another play before the two-minute warning. That is the two-minute warning, third and one, when we come back. 17-12, Green Bay. Packers hold on to a five-point lead. The Saints have a third and one, exactly two minutes to go. The Saints have all three of their timeouts left. In their quest to go on top at halftime, as Jim Mora, the second-year head coach, looks on. Third and one. At the two-minute mark. Hey, 
Dalton Hilliard didn't make it. I don't think he did. No, he didn't make it. Jerry Borowski, a good penetration from his uh, nose guard position. I don't think they made it. Now, is Moore going to go for it on fourth and one? No, I think he'll punt it. They will bring the chain out. It's not that the noise level is not what we expected it to be, Vern. Nor so is the score. Here. <laughs> no, Nor is the too. score. That's true. Short. I think he'll punt it. Yeah. Hanson's coming on. Yeah. That's the right thing to do. Yes, it, Jim. Come over your ears. Don't listen to him. <laughs> you know something? If they said go for it, he didn't make it, then they go boo. Oh, boo, you bet. You clown. What you do that for? <laughs> so Hanson comes on for your man out of Sioux Falls. This is his first punt. I know this. I watched him working in the practice field. They do have a fake punt, and David Waymer takes the snap and runs left. Waymer is the. I don't up think it would be the time to do it now, but I mean they have it in their game plan. Outside, no flag. Short punt. Walter Stanley. I thought he was offside. I did too. I don't think he got back. 41 yard punt, six yard return. There were no flags at the line of scrimmage. There's one flag downfield, but. That flag is at the 30. And Fred Silva getting ready to explain the nature of the infraction. On the run back, number 25, 29. Illegal use of the hand to the face. 10 yards, first down. Ken Stills, the guilty party. Packers will get it back now. 117 to go in the first half. Don Mikowski, four of eight for 98 yards. Two of the four have gone for touchdowns. See what they've got in mind now. They'll keep it close to the best with a five-point lead and 117 to go. I would. I wouldn't take any chances, especially with a guy starting the fifth game in his career, and he hasn't started the game in a long time. So the Packers bring it up. They have two timeouts left. They're going to run this one, looks like to me. You bet. Full work. And he's down at the 15-yard line. Number one draft choice. Now the Saints will call timeout. That'll leave them with two at the 109 mark. Timeout number one. Coming up at halftime. Go back to our New York studios with Frant, Irv, and all the scores. And a tribute to Walter Payton, a man called Sweetness. That's coming at halftime. And that is just 109 away from right now. You know, Jim Mora and his wife had a had a real near tragedy in their home just a week or so ago. Uh, they were robbed at gunpoint by two men. And uh, Jim said yesterday, unless you've been through it, you have no idea how terrifying something like that is. And Jim went ahead and grabbed the gun and pushed it toward the air. And, and then all of a sudden he started thinking, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? And then the guy lets him know that, hey, there, I'm not here alone. Well, he said someone's that, got your wife in the other room with him. Yeah, gun. the second guy had a gun in Connie's head, and uh, they got away. The two of them did, but then one was arrested, and they have one in custody. The other is still out, and there's a. <laughs> <laughs> 109 to go. 17 to 12. Green Bay leads it. And the handoff comes left. Good job of playing strong safety by Gene Atkins there, first. Did a nice job. And another timeout called by Jim Moore and the Saints. Paul Ott Carruth with a carry, and he's from Birmingham and actually Hattiesburg, Mississippi. He has 82 friends and relatives here in the stands today. That's a lot of tickets. That's right. You know why it's so critical for the Saints to be calling timeouts instantaneously as soon as that plays over? Because they Third and five. Out of the shotgun. New Orleans has one timeout left. And off, call off the roof. They'll call, well, he might be close to the first down. It is a first down. 
So the strategy of calling quick timeouts is fine, but you've also got to stop them defensively. Right. And you they were unable to that, do it. You could just sense that would have guessed 100 bucks right there, or bet 100 bucks that they were going to run the draw. Just their overall approach offensively. Don't do anything risky to turn the ball over or anything like that. That'll do it for the first half. One more play. And having achieved the first down by Green Bay, New Orleans doesn't bother to use their final timeout. That will be the final play of the first half. And we'll wind it up with a Green Bay lead of five points on two touchdown passes. Don Mikowski to Walter Stanley. Vern, I was in this situation one time in the last play before the half. I ran a running play, handed off the guy, ran off. A defensive lineman came across the line of scrimmage, stole the ball from the running back, and ran it in for a touchdown. I've really done more than I thought I'd be able to do. You come in as the 10th round draft choice. Right. Quarterback, I guarantee he's done more. More than Green Bay expected. Here's the kick as the second half is underway and the Saints will receive. Mel Gray, who fumbled the kickoff return to set up the first Green Bay touchdown. Or the second, rather. And the New Orleans Saints trailing by five. Come on, Bobby Bear in the first half. 9 of 16 for 85, 9 of 12 rather, for 85 yards. And Mikowski, 4 of 8. Those two touchdowns are the difference in the game right now. You know, everybody expects the coach to go into halftime and rant and rave like last week when the Saints were down. Jim just went in and said, hey, we're beating ourselves, guys. Uh -huh. If we want to win the football game, we've got to first stop beating ourselves. Think he would give the same kind of speech today? Yeah, I think so. I don't think they're beating themselves so much. They turn the ball over a little bit, but uh, they'll get them going if they're capable <laughs> here. Double tight end set. A bear on first down. That is the secondary receiver, Ruben Mays, out of the backfield. And he's out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Alvin Tolls, the linebacker, injured on a kickoff return with what we were told was a sprained knee. And if so, I would think a second or third degree sprain. That's pretty. He may not get to play in the first three. Uh, postseason games right game. and just to, to recap for you if the Saints win today and if the 49ers lose tonight then New Orleans is in as the division champion and they have the home field advantage throughout if they lose or if the 49ers win tonight then New Orleans is at home in the wild card game a week from today second down and five hey there looks deep again he's got a man short with a race for the second time first down at the 43 Mark Lee with the tackle, number 22. Ruben Mays, top middle of your screen, play action fake. Not much fake by the quarterback. Now watch him to the left side of the screen. Check out, linebackers have dropped deep. John Anderson, number 15, the left outside comes up. Terry comes, Anderson coming inside out. Mark Lee turns him back in and makes the tackle. That's the first down, New Orleans. At the 44-yard line, just underway in the second half. Second catch for Mays in the ballgame. Madison goes in motion to the left side. Toss left. Edelman tries to help out with a block, but he can't get out quick enough. Okay, Robert Brown, again, number 93, is giving Jim Dombrowski all he can handle and a little bit more. Dombrowski is last year's number one pick. Here he is to the right side of your screen, 93. Now, Dombrowski went for a reach block on him, and Brown went underneath that reach block. Now, the offensive guard should come out and seal that inside gap. Didn't get help from the inside. Packers are doing a good job against the run. 56 yards on the ground at halftime. Total for New Orleans. 56. Second and 11. Hebert with a play fake. Pretty good pressure. And Hebert will have to scoop. Now he's got some room. John Anderson hauls him down. And a flag. Fake man. The tackle. Fake man. Plus, Hebert didn't want to have to scramble too much with that knee being as sore as it is. So he hasn't missed a practice. He hasn't missed a practice. It's the right knee for Bobby Hebert. Heavily wrapped. Face mask. By number three. Offense. Five yards. Offense. That's a switch. How about that? A face mask on the man being tackled. <laughs> he doesn't have any of those running back skills in the stiff arm. Now, here he is in the middle of your screen. Now, he gets his right arm out, carrying that ball like a loaf of bread. He gets, he gets that out there. Like, let it go. 
Oh, that's sort of a chintzy call, really. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just warding him off, not pulling him down. Bobby. That's all right. We forgive you, Bobby. That'll make it second down and six. Green he was, Bay is you thought he was nitpicking, Ron. Yeah, he was. Definitely. Definitely. Green Bay is doing a good job of changing up their defenses. That makes it a second and six. 12.44 to go, third quarter. Shotgun formation. Dombrowski in the fast blocking stance early. Hey, Bear. That's to the 41 yard line. First down to Orleans. Patterson with a catch. Murphy with a tackle. Great example of a wide receiver getting down there. He got in between defenders. Instead of settling right there, he worked back away from the defenders to the quarterback. Here he is, number 88. Now watch him coming off. Now he's going to curl up. See him to the top there. Now he works around. See, he's right on the 40-yard line. Now watch him work back to the football. If he doesn't do that, he risks a chance for the interception or a batted ball. But working back to the football is the critical thing as a wide receiver. Addison goes left, coming in with only seven catches, but a good per catch average. First and ten at the 11.50 mark of the third quarter from the 41. And Mays picks up a couple. This time it's John Anderson, number 59, with a tackle again. Forrest Drake said Anderson played perhaps his best game of a, of a fine career last week. He had a super game, as we mentioned earlier. He had nine tackles, two sacks against the Giants. You do that against the Giants regardless if they're not a Super Bowl team anymore. Still a good day's work. This is a good, solid, young defensive team, isn't it, Green Bay? We, you know, this is the second opportunity we've had to evaluate them and see them play, and I really agree that they're not that far away. Second and eight. 11-10 to go, third quarter. Bear with a three-step drop. He's been very quiet today. Makes the catch for the first down at the 30. Oh, the first catch. High efficiency, quick slant burn. They're loaded up to the formation. All receivers to the left to try to get the isolation on the right. He gets a quick slant right into Eric Martin. And Eric Martin has really been playing well for Jim Moore's football team. Doing a little bit more than maybe even anticipated. Making the great catch once in a while. Really doing a fine job. Martin goes left for the season of 17.9 yards per catch average. First and 10, New Orleans. They once left 3 nothing. A trail since. Once to 14 to 3. There's Carl Smith, the offensive coordinator, and unusual, Dick, he calls the plays from the sideline instead of the press box. I asked him why he did that, and he said the last game he coached in college up in southwest Louisiana, the phones broke, and he was in the press box, okay, and he kept going down the field, and the phones would be repaired. He'd go back up in the press box. He did it three or four times. He ended up on the field at the end of the game, and he found out that it, he could control the clock better down there, and they also end up calling the last series drive that won the game, and now he calls it from the sideline. Flag is down. He says there's no question you can't see as well down there, but you have a better feel for it, and I can control the clock better because I don't have to relay anything, so we save seconds in those critical Offense, time situations. Number 66, all start. 66, that's Chuck 67, Kaminsky. 67, correct. Oh, number right. 67, five yards, all start, Stan Brock. number two. Yeah, Stan Brock wanted to make sure he got credit for that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he appreciated the correction. There's Carl Smith in the half. And Dave Wilson, the hero of last week's win, standing right with him. Former number one draft choice out of Illinois, number 18. I don't think it'll be too long before Carl Smith will be recognized as one of the fine offensive coordinators in the National Football League. You know, you don't hear him right now. You hear the other guys. But you'll be hearing about this guy. Second down and 15 from the 34. Out of the shotgun, New Orleans trading 17 to 12. Take the blitz. He beat it. play coming to the right side of your screen number 29 and he still look at the draw goes right up underneath him therefore nobody there because the safety is split he gets the block downfield makes a nice boot to the outside and Don here gets it in the end zone 
Fumble, out of bounds. And yeah, it goes right, it all goes right. The fumble occurred at the 11, so it will not be first and goal. That's a gain of 24 yards on the third down play. Safety blitz, you can get him for the loss, or you can give him the big play. Opening play of the half. Look at that cutback. Williams to the five-yard line. does a nice job of taking the ball starting to his right see him deep in the middle of your screen number 21 everyone working now once you make it break back good job of blocking by the back side of the offensive line in this case it was 82 john tight the big tight end it prevented the linebacker from holding back in there to make that play second and four five point margin green bay leads at 17 12. double side end set with threat Hilliard. Short of the first down, three and a half. They have three tight ends in the ball game right now. 6'5", 249, 6'4", 242, 6'4", 240. That's a pretty good blocking group of people right there. I mean, they're big and strong. Crowd is waiting to erupt. Things got uh, off to a shocking start as Green Bay fumbled the opening snap. And the Saints... Recovered, kicked a field goal to take an early 3-0 lead. But from that point, Green Bay erupted for 14 points. See, they can make a first down. They can actually elect to go two downs for the first down. Hayes comes right. Back in the end zone. Kicks down at the play stand. Flag was thrown before he scored. He said... Touchdown, and Morton Anderson, who has not missed an extra point this year, will try and make it a perfect 35 and does. And with an impressive opening second half drive, Ruben Mays caps it with a TD. Gets the deep toss, good blocking at the point of attack, good knockdown block right there. Here he goes, sprinting for the flag. Get that flag. There it is. Touchdown. game at the end of the game you'll see the owner of the Saints Tom Benson under an umbrella similar to that doing the Benson boogie that's called the Benson umbrella or boogie umbrella I guess it is it's and, nice to have a boss that's enthusiastic about it but you know only own a team for two years and here you are going to playoffs that's right Grant Fullwood flag comes flying there's one of those, if you'll pardon the, the, the word, ubiquitous yeah. flags on the kickoff. You, you, you come up with those big words like that. I well, have no idea what you're talking about. You've used that once before, but you never did tell me what it meant. <laughs> Means they're all over the place. <laughs> Penley, Bill. Ruben Mays scored the go-ahead touchdown, and the flag will probably be against Green Bay. It is, in fact. That was a very impressive way to open the half. 6.45, 12 plays, 72 yards. The big play was the Dalton Hilliard draw play to beat the safety blitz. Right, and you know, that's so typical of the New Orleans Saints offensive approach, really. They don't try to get it on all in one play very often. On the run you back, know, they just work it down. Three, the illegal block in the back, decline. That's a new call. We haven't heard number that one all year. Ever. Holding, accepted, first down. Oh, they had their option. And you know, In that 72-yard drive, as the Saints begin to encourage their fans to respond, here was the draw play. Safety blitz, and he just beats it. Everybody else playing man-to-man -man in a blitz situation. Now it's tough to get back in and get in so he can make the tackle. The defense is trying to get over there, but they can't make the play until he gets down inside that pin. And from the nine-yard line, Von Mikowski puts his team on offense for the first time. And the fans come alive. Kenneth Davis. Willing with.
with the tackle. Great play. He chased that all the way down from behind. And to me, he's going to end up being the outstanding linebacker of a fine group of linebackers. He's going to be the outstanding. Yeah, they've got Ricky Jackson, Vaughn Johnson, Sam Mills, and Thrilling. And Mills is in the Pro Bowl at 5-9. Jackson's mad because he's not, and Thrilling probably should be. Second and ten. Pass oh, complete. watch out. Jackson's yeah. going to get flagged. Yeah. Four We're going to play that. We're going to get that. You bet. On the tackle, personal foul, number 57, pitch in the face, 15 yards. He scrambled out to the right, Vern, and then gets the ball downfield. Gets it to the receiver here. Oh, yeah, you can see the right hand then extended. As we saw that replay, you can see Ricky Jackson's hands extended into Philip Epps' face. They're going to call that every time. He might, he's maybe a little too upset about not making the Pro Bowl. First down at the 30. Jim Wilkes with a tackle, number 94. Jimmy Wilkes did an awfully nice job of coming off Ken Rutgers' block, number 75. Worked it back in when it was a cutback. Pat Swilly, the left side of his screen, number 56, taking on the tight end. He jumped outside, hard to hook him. He turns it back in there, fighting off two blockers, turned it back into the pursuit. Good job by Pat Swilly. He must have been slanting that way because he jumped right outside. Second down and eight. 1917, 635 to go, third quarter. St. Lee. Oh, illegal coaches. Flags are down. Mikowski, great elusiveness. Freelancing and fires deep. Tipped away. There should have been penalty on that play. Left guard Rich Moran was not set. That's the call. It may be Moran. Yeah. Offense, illegal motion, it's declined. Third down. Didn't tell us who it was, but it looked yeah, like number 57. Guard. I saw him move. The left guard, number 57. That'll make it third and eight. 68,000 screaming now in the Superdome. This is and the noise we expected to hear. The Saints have come from behind. They trailed 14 to 3 in the first half. They lead it 19 to 17 over Green Bay. Four-man rush. Super job by the quarterback that time. Excellent job of under pressure. He actually looked like he threw that ball sidearm. He almost went under him. Bruce Clark, number 75, got good pressure on him. Shotgun formation, middle of the screen. Clark goes underneath Halston, coming right up down the hash mark. See, flushes him up inside. Now watch his throw. He just flips it there to his right. Good job under pressure. Frankie Neal takes the ball, gets the first down. That's a gain of 13. Green Bay has moved it out to the 45. They started the drive at the 9. A Ricky Jackson forearm gave them 15 on a unnecessary roughness call. Mikowski with good numbers, though conservative. Jesse Clark. Walter Stanley with a block. Flag is down. Van Jakes with the tackle. Let's see about the infraction. Number 39, defense. Illegal use of the hands to the face. Ten yards. First down. Brett Maxey. Brett Maxey's a pre-med major. Should be smart enough not to use his hands illegally, should he? He's angry about it. Yeah. That's the second major foul against the Saints in this drive. Five yards penalty. Five yards instead of ten. 
Detroit leads Atlanta by four. Giants over the Jets by ten. Philly bouncing Philly Buffalo. Kansas City still leads Seattle. And Houston may be en route to the playoffs. Dallas over St. Louis by four. Indianapolis leading by seven. First and ten, Green Bay. They've moved from their own nine to the 40. Jesse Clark to the 35-yard line. Clark to the carry. That's really on the second. Green Bay is turning around and using the same kind of football that New Orleans used to, to contain or eat up about seven, eight minutes. Right. Just bang at them, you know, positive gains, short passes. Here they are in the 35-yard line. Second game of the doubleheader, Chicago against the Raiders. That's next on CBS. We've got a good one here, 440 to go, third quarter. 1917 New Orleans, second and five. Draw play. Dennis Davis, quite a good Good call holding over. Game for the umpire. Like holding Green Bay. Yep. Off Take it back. Center, number 58. Holding. 10 yards. Still second down. That's Mark Cannon. Mark Cannon. Is Mark the guy that got Green caught in the elevator Green yesterday? Green no, that was Rich Moran, Rich number 57. Moran. 11, Saint, uh, 11 Packers, Packers got on the same Green elevator Green. yesterday in the hotel. The elevator went to the third floor and got stuck, and Rich Moran right there had to take off his clothes to squeeze out of the top of the elevator as the last man they got out. <laughs> Eleven huge guys on one elevator. Moran was the unfortunate one. Mikowski. Stanley, first down. Boy, this kid impressive. Did a real nice job of getting back, setting up, getting up inside the rush, didn't panic, and then worked him through the nice deep square in pattern. Concentrate on the quarterback here. Just watch his poise, remembering that he's just a young guy, starting his fifth game. See him slide up there, black jerseys behind him, black jerseys in front of him, didn't bother him. Throws a strike downfield. You're impressed Oops. with him. I am very impressed with him. Well, Forrest Gregg said yesterday, I think he's got a future, speaking of Mikowski. I want to check him out. 7 of 12 for 138. First down at the 24. Kenneth Davis on the sweep. Good block by Ed Wett. 86 on Ricky Jackson. He ended up putting Ricky Jackson on his back. That doesn't happen very often. Ricky Jackson got a knockdown. He went pancake. Ed West, number 86, the tight end. And there is Ricky Jackson. Somebody this week asked Jackson what he wanted to do after he retired. He said he'd like to keep a job in football. But he didn't want to be a coach. He wanted something a little easier, like being a scout. He said, you know, I want one of those jobs where you work four or five hours a day. <laughs> four or five hours yeah. a day, yeah. Scouts all over America yeah. passed out at that word. Mikowski got him up and F touchdown. How about the Green Bay drive? 91 yards and a 20-yard TD pass. Don Mikowski to Phillip Epps. And three touchdown tosses for that rookie out of Virginia. Did an awfully nice job of laying it high and outside on the corner pattern. Good protection up inside. He put the ball up in the air. Gave him a good inside stick move. Got on the safety. They were rolled up in double zone. And he, he moved the pattern in and got on the safety. Brett Jackson then broke to the corner. You noted that 22 Van Jakes was up. He covered the short area. He had safety deep. Zendejas' kick is up and through. Philip Epps has been inactive with an injury the last two weeks. And Mikowski finds him deep in the end zone left side. Third touchdown pass to the ball game. Here he is, taking another look at it. Coming to the right corner of the end zone. Into the zone. Remaining in the third quarter. Second down and seven. 
you, you do that, you know, you execute that great drive, then just turn around and give them that kind of play. They earned it, though. They didn't give it to him. Boy, is that he played it. Play fake. Hey, there. That's the settle short again. It's incomplete. Kobe Brenner, the intended receiver. And he was open. Thus, the crowd reaction. <laughs> Bobby Hebert playing on that gimpy leg. 13 of 18 for 122. Most of them have been short. And we mentioned in the first half that this is his 12th start of the season. He reaches one of the incentive clauses in his contract. So economically, it's a big day for him. You had that kind of incentive in your contract. You'd go out there with both crutches. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know this. I show up with Larry Joyner. <laughs> third of seven. You play by play hurt. You gotta talk hurt this late. <laughs> that kind of money. Oh, can't oh, 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 it comes. Yeah. Took a while. Dave Brown is the guilty party, number 32. Patterson, the intended receiver. And Forrest Drake, the angry coach. Here are the receivers all set to the left side of your screen. Dondell Hill, number 87, working out close to the corner. Now you can see right there that Brown coming back from the outside in on Patterson actually ran up his back and tripped him. Dave Brown arguing, or Mark Lee rather, is arguing the case, and Alfonso Carricker. I think what they're arguing is that the two got their legs tangled. Uh, incidental contact. Yeah. Green Bay, 7 for 56. They are... A a hugely penalized team. The Packers in Dallas up there among the, the elite in the negative stack. First and goal for the five. Double tight end set again. Hey Bear. John Price is the play stand. That is his sixth touchdown catch of the year. But it may not go. We're getting different signals down there. Oh, touchdown signal. Defense, 22. Illegal use the hands to the face. Decline. Touchdown. John Price has caught 15 passes for the season. Six have gone for touchdown. Number 72. He's a big guy. Six foot, four and a half, six five, two forty. Those big guys down in the end zone are hard to cover physically. But here he is. He works his way back from the outside of the field, back to the inside of the field. Broke away touchdown. Anderson on to the extra point. And again, it's a two point. New Orleans lead. 127 to go, third quarter. We've gotten on the teeter corner here in the second half. In the third quarter, John Tice's sixth touchdown catch of the year has put the Saints back on top by two. 26-24. I wonder if he's looking around to see if he can see a Seattle-Kansas City score because his brother Mike Tice is playing for Kansas uh, for Seattle right now trying to earn a right to go to the playoffs. The family dream yeah. come through. Both of them in. And again, Anderson. Oh, what a weapon that is because it erases the threat of the kickoff return. Yeah. And it was the kickoff return that set up the last touchdown. You talk about special teams being important. It's almost... Oh, taken as a cliche, but look at this. Well, it just shows you they're so complete, their whole football team right now. Offensively, they're doing a great job. Defensively, they're doing a great job. And Joe Marciano's special teams right here demonstrate what they can do. They're doing a great job. Yeah, they're punt return team. Their punt returners leading the NFL right now. They're a complete, well-coached football team. So having fallen behind on a 90-yard drive, the Saints use the kickoff return to go three plays, 20 yards, and Tice catches the touchdown. 1.21 to go, and Mikowski back at quarterback. Epps in motion. Play fake, Mikowski still has it. Oh, oh. intercepted, Vaughn Johnson, who has won this year, just about had his second. Great job of defense by Vaughn Johnson. Yes, super linebacker position. He felt the tight end coming across the formation. Here it is, it was a play action pass. He's getting heat by Jim Wilkes right now. He gets rid of the ball. 
because you can see right in perfect position underneath Ed West, number 84. Second down and 10. Vaughn Johnson, one of the nine former USFL players that labor under Jim Mora's leadership here in New Orleans. And again, the crowd gets with it. That was motion from Rich Moran. Be a dead ball foul. That's his second one. Right. He's still thinking about being caught in that elevator. Offense, number 57. Ball start. Rich Moran is a real dedicated professional football player. When we were up there doing Green Bay doing the game a few weeks ago, I went in and looked at some tapes at about 5 o'clock in the evening on Friday evening. He was sitting in there studying tapes himself, all by himself, just studying tapes, getting prepared to that time to play the 49ers. How about the Kansas City score over Seattle? Cincinnati's come back. Now they're still leading St. Louis by four. Cardinals have to win to get the playoffs. And Indianapolis leading now by 14. New Orleans has got to get some pressure on Green Bay. They hand it off to Stanley, who is caught behind the line, as Van Jake does a great job. Clever little play that didn't work, Vern. Coming from the, he was in motion coming from the left side of the screen. They were actually trying to sweep no back in the backfield to hand it off to. They wanted to bring him across there from a flanker position in motion. It backfired. Every once in a while, a play like that will explode positively as well. That's a loss of 11. What that means, though, any kind of defensive play here, New Orleans has great field position on the exchange of punch. Third and 25. And the crowd is on its feet. That will be short of the first down. Jakes again with the tackle. And the Saints are going to come out of this in terrific shape. Don Blacken is on the punt. And you turn around, now you're punting it to a guy that's averaged over 15 yards of return, has an 80-yard return already this year. A complete football team. Mel Gray waits for it. At the 48-yard line. Special teams have been significant in this turnaround for the Saints. And they'll let the quarter expire. And they've blocked five punts on the year. That's the end of the third quarter with a score. Saints 26, Packers 24. Back for the final quarter. A sold-out Superdome in New Orleans. The Saints have fought back to take the lead at 26-24. And Mel Gray waits at the 45 to return Don Bracken's punt. Third... Or fourth and 20. They've got the return on. That's a line drive punt that should be returned. But not by very far, and a flag is down. A flag is down. A flag is down. The kicking game has almost been ruined by the flag. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you know, I had an interesting conversation last week on an airplane with Gary Lane, who's a side judge in the league. And I asked him that point. Don't you think we're seeing too many of those flags on, on kicking? On receiving team number 44. Illegal block above the waist in the back. 10 yards. First down. Dave Weimer. And he said, Dick, that no, there weren't because it was an injury protection device, and that's what they were doing. We'll return to the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans after this word from your local station. First down and 10, New Orleans. We've got 14-49 to go in the game. Saints are in the playoffs. If they win today and the Rams defeat the 49ers tonight, New Orleans is the division champion. That's what's at stake. Oh, Reuben Mays as the ground game continues to struggle against this alert Packer defense. This is the first game of our doubleheader, and don't forget the next game will have the Chicago Bears against the Los Angeles Raiders live from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. That's coming up next, some 30 minutes from now. I think Big Mike has got their attention. <laughs> I think he yes. Second and nine. Hebert has completed 14 passes. They have gone to nine different receivers this afternoon. He spread the wealth around. 
And he'll hand it off this time to Dalton Hilliard. It'll be third down and nine. New Orleans sitting on a two-point lead. A recap of the game would take an hour. And Jim Mora shakes his head at the lack of success in the last play. He's also talking to the guys. And everything that goes in offensively and defensively goes through his headset. So he always knows what's going on. Alfonso character looks like he might have pulled a hamstring. Or got a cramp, one or the other. Third and nine. New Orleans only three of eight on third down conversions, and many of them have been in excess of seven yards. Hey there, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Ross Browner got good pressure on it, number 79, and put him down and threw that like he was thrown out of a box hole, you know. Ross Browner, Browner the veteran from Cincinnati, he snapped the shotgun, working right over on the right guard, Sam Trapilla working up inside there. Here he comes, boom, right up to his face. Tough to throw accurately. Here's the punt, taken by Stanley. Great coverage. Tackled by Maxi. No, Sutton. Reggie Sutton. Packers get it back. 13 13 to go. For Green Bay, it's been the Don Mikowski show. Three touchdown passes, 164 yards. Morton Anderson, four field goals for the Saints. Bobby Abair, short passes, 127 yards and one touchdown. It was the go ahead touchdown. And we've got 13 13 remaining in the game. Just go back, Dick, to the point you made. I, I'm most impressed with Green Bay and Mikowski under pressure this afternoon. You know, sometimes you get a young quarterback, quarterback like that and lacks experience, and, and lacking experience almost gives him an advantage because he doesn't know enough things to worry about. You know, he just goes ahead and plays and has fun, and he's doing a lot of good things. He's got the ball right now, but in the last Saints possession, prior to the punt, it was Bobby Hebert who threw the only touchdown pass he's had today. It went to John Price, and by that touchdown, New Orleans leads 26-24. Back line. 13-13 to go. Mikowski. Brent Fullwood. Oh. Ricky Jackson with the tackle. The guy that really did a nice job on that is David Weimer. He's down right now. I think he got the wind knock out of him. Weimer is in the Pro Bowl for the first time in his career, his eight-year career out of Notre Dame. In those 20, uh, in those years, he's intercepted 28 passes, so it's probably about time he gets in the Pro Bowl. You'll see him coming from the left corner of your screen. He's supporting the run now, forward carrying the ball. Holstrom at 65, he comes up underneath, see? and he got kicked in the face with that right leg. Good job of run force there by a cornerback. You know, there's not a lot of corners. Well, there are a number of them, but not all of them. Let's put it that way. We'll go in there and take on that sweep like that. It's the week of the bowl games on CBS coming up on Thursday. The Mazda Gator Bowl, South Carolina at 8 3 against LSU live at 2.30 Eastern time from Jacksonville. That'll be followed by the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. Notre Dame against the Aggies in for the third time. Fighting Irish come in 8-3 and the Aggies at 9-2. That's live 1.30 Eastern time on New Year's afternoon. Waymer walks off by himself and Johnny Poe takes his place. David, one of the, I think, nicer guys in the league. Really, really very friendly and I was surprised to read that he is not talking to the media in New Orleans. <laughs> Mad at him. Or at least some of them. Yeah. Didn't call him what Dexter Manley called him on national television last week, but he's upset with it. Second down and nine. Mikowski. He can run. Incomplete. Mixed up with Walter Stanley. It'll be third and nine. So you know, the other advantage Mikowski has is New Orleans really doesn't know Green Bay offense with him at the helm. They don't know the tendencies that he developed, the little pluses that he has in maybe his scrambling ability or how he reacts under pressure or if he can handle a rush in the face or it's better to come around the outside on him. They're finding this out as the ball game goes on. It's an advantage for Mikowski. David Weimer is back in the lineup. Third and nine. Packers are two of six on third down conversions. 
And move. Short of the first down at the 30-25 yard line. As Van Jakes, who's been active in the secondary, makes the tackle. Don Bracken is on on fourth down, and Mel Gray goes back near the 40-yard line. You know, Don Bracken has a 40.6 average this year. I wonder what his average would be if he punted the football eight games here in this dome rather than in Green Bay. Boy, no kidding. It'd be better. That's a return type ball. Gray at the 33. Good tackle. Down at the 41. Tiger no Green makes the tackle. No play. <laughs> We're in shock. 11.45 to go in the ball game, And the New Orleans Saints hanging on to a two-point lead. They trailed by five at the half, 17-12. Came back to take the lead on their first third quarter possession. But Green Bay went 90 yards to recapture the lead. And then the Saints came back to go back on top, 26-24, on an A-bear to tight touchdown pass. First and ten, New Orleans at the 41-yard line. Toss left. Ribbon made. Got ankle tackled at the 40. Clayton Wiseman made the stop. There's Dick Mojoleski, who's been in the NFL about as long as anybody I can think of. 20, 34 years in total, 14 years as a player, 20 years as a coach. You know, in preparation for the ball game, I read an article written by Bob McGinn of the Green Bay Papers up there, and they really did a nice job of paying a tribute to this guy because he's really done a super job of molding this defense. And, you know, he's not one of the guys you read about all the time in terms of defensive coordinators and have the big names. He's just doing an excellent job. Second down and 10, New Orleans. And again, the double tight end set. A bear with a short drop. Oh, oh, oh. John Anderson has it. And Anderson is down at the 42. That's the second turnover. New Orleans in this half. Or in this game. You know, he's trying to throw a zone seam pass to the tight end of the right side of your screen, and he threw the ball too flat. If you throw a zone pass, you got to put air on it, get it up in the air. See the tight end will appear right there to the right corner of your screen. He threw the ball too flat, and John Anderson dissected it in pass. That's John Anderson's 24th career pass interception. And the Packers' 10-point underdog coming in. Now the first down at the Saints 42. Kowski. Burn. 
A Bear throws an interception that could be critical in the ball game. They intercept it. They come back. A Bear goes in. The next two plays are passes. They have confidence, and they don't think he's going to throw another one. <laughs> you know, many coaches would say, "Hey, you threw an interception. We're going to start running the ball." Mm -hmm. John Tice on the sideline, limping a little bit. It'll be second down and three. Saints. John Tice caught the go-ahead score. Late third quarter. Safety blip. And from the eye of the ball ball. <laughs> And Hilliard appears to have enough to move the save. He's the strong safety out there. Remember last time they ran a similar play, the draw play was an inside safety blitz, and he broke it. Got it out of the shotgun on that one. And this is the first and ten Saints. On the sideline, Pat Swilling, first interception of the year. That was of his career, too. Yeah. Short career over two years. He's going to hang on to that. First and ten, New Orleans, Hilliard, and Barry Word in the backfield now. Clock shows 9.05 in the game.
So pass thrilling interception sets up another TD drive for the New Orleans Saints, and Anderson's extra point is good. There's the goal line. Actually, it looks like a man is lined up offside. Here he goes up high, getting over there. <laughs> Hard to tell from that angle. Sauvignon Blanc. Zinfandel. Cabernet Sauvignon. To all those who are coming home, and those we come home to, from Ernest and Julio Gao, all the best. Now, especially now, you need an investment firm that is rock solid, strong, unshaken, with capital and clear vision for the bad times, not just the good. Prudential Bates Securities, part of the Prudential family. Well, that scene is the owner of the Saints, Tom Benson, paid $72 million. <laughs> He says, get down your hand, they got me on television. Go and we may playoff. be six minutes away from the Benson boogie. Yeah. Well, Jim Moore and Connie Moore say Mr. Benson is really a wonderful guy and a great owner. And it, it's just, it's nice to see that air of excitement in New Orleans for the first time ever. Saints have not come up with a case of the shorts this year. Look at that kickoff. And again, it'll be a touchback. That last touchdown drive that may, may have cinched the victory set up by Pat Swilling's interception. Pat Swilling will be on the right. Now, you'll notice there's all kinds of play action to the right side of your screen. That kept Pat Swilling close to the dump-off man. They, they tried to get the ball out there to pull off the route, number 30. And, and there was a guy frozen on the line of scrimmage that just sort of fell back into the play. And that was the key to the scoring drive. At least got it started. 53 yards and seven plays, 409. He just got the TD. It's the nine point New Orleans lead. <laughs> Kenneth Davis out to the 26 yard line. And the clock is now at 618 and running. funny you talk about that Benson boogie it started when the Saints won a game a big game here and Tom Benson the owner came out of the stands with an umbrella and began dancing on the sidelines and now it's become a tradition with every victory here and there have been a few this year and there might be a day that he wished he didn't start that you know get tired of doing all that stuff second down and three number 51 left of the hash mark dropping off his zone looking for outside in coverage or pattern rather now he sees him coming back in here he works right over <laughs> if you're ever going to have an opportunity to pick one off there it was third and three zone. Mills is out prevent defense is in there's the walker over 100 yards and the Cowboys hang on to a lead over St. Louis which is denied the Cardinals to play off After the hurry, they beat the 30 second clock. Into the flat end to break. Saints will get it back and work on the clock. Merry Christmas. Just one more allusion to that Benson boogie. I saw an ad. Tom Benson is a, is a very wealthy automobile dealer. There was an ad in the morning paper here advertising the Boogie Brothers. <laughs> if you come in and test drive one of these cars, they give you an umbrella. I'll tell you, if I were Mr. Benson, I'd play them all black and gold right now. It's got a lot of them. Nice punch. Mel Gray. And the Saints are 528 away from a victory. There are the Benson Boogie Brothers. 
A 47-yard punt, 11 on the return. And 5-28 remaining in the game. If they win, and Dave Wilson is coming into the ballgame now. Six-year man out of Illinois who had been all but inactive for the season and came in when Hebert was injured last week and had a superb game. He went 9 for 15, 160 yards and one touchdown. Brought him back, like you said, with over 30 points unanswered. That's tough to do. Up the middle. Very well. They were one on the now. of a game like this and you're leading 33-24, you feel no pain. If give me the ball, I'll run it. Monday will hurt all over. Word now is carried four times to 13 yards. First and ten. Oh, bad snap. Football. That whole play started for a quarter. The Packers have recovered. Timothy Harris caused it, and Robert Brown got it. Actually, the center snapped the ball on this play early. You'll know, watch the ball right between the quarterback's legs. See, no one else moved. That sort of broke the timing of the play. That's no excuse for the fumble. Tim Harris, 97, came around from behind and stripped him. And now he's an outside linebacker at 6'5", 245 pounds. That's a big outside linebacker. Robert Brown is the injured player. He is called 33 24 to score here. David Waymer was the victim of the touchdown pass. It did not affect his confidence. Of course, with all that experience of going to the Pro Bowl, he doesn't question his ability. But there are corners once you're beat deep. They'll play it real soft. You can see that time he was challenging Walter Stanley all the way. Nice play, David. Second down and ten. Exactly four minutes remaining. Davis out of the backfield. What's coming? Thank you, Blitz. Maxi caused it. Clark recovered. Coming from the right corner of your screen, halfway up. Safety Blitz coming around the outside. Pullback sets down to the inside. No one to pick up Brett Maxi. Ball knocked out of his hands. Super call by Steve Sidwell, the defensive coordinator. Here he comes. No one to pick him up. They're outnumbered over on that side with that back checking out. Boy, that one hurts a little bit. You get hit from that blind side. Welcome to the NFL, Bukowski. <laughs> Clark for the recovery. Saints will work on the clock again. 3.55 to go. Ruben Mays will try and stay in bounds. See, now the running play is not directly at the line of scrimmage. They don't want to go out of bounds, but they want to run plays that take a long time to develop. He just eats up seconds on the clock. They don't want to go out of bounds. That stops the clock with 3.48 to go. And the Saints leading by nine. They trailed 17-12 at the half. They were behind 14-3 in the first quarter. You know, the last two ball games they've had to come from behind. They don't want to carry that, <laughs> that thought into uh, playoff games because it's tough to come from behind 
against other, you know, top quality playoff caliber teams. Second game of the doubleheader coming up. Chicago and the Raiders. See, here they are again, running parallel. See that? Eating up time. Get a block. And a block from Wilson. Wilson, pretty good blocker. Who tried to cut John Anderson? Anderson did jump over it. I think they're actually trying to run these kind of plays a little too soon. Do you? Yeah. A lot of running, no yards, time eaten up on the clock. You can see, count it, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, they're eating up the clock, Bird. Just... <laughs> John Anderson coming over there to put him down. Three minutes to go in the game. Third and nine, third and ten. Wilson the throw for the first time. Brilliant effort. And the Packers will get it back. That's the only thing he's done wrong today. That's right. Well, they're going to try and keep the crowd off the field. See if it works. Fourth down. Walter Stanley waits at the 15-yard line. Yeah, high but short. Bad punt. Inbounds and down by Johnny Poe at the 22-yard line. 33-yard punt. The Packers get it back. Sugar Bowl is coming up here, of course, on New Year's Day, and there is the Auburn football team. Pat Dye, the head coach. Syracuse also here. Not to keep you away from the Sugar Bowl, but don't forget on CBS, we'll have the Mazda Gator Bowl, New Year's Eve. Dick and I will be in Jacksonville for that one. South Carolina against LSU, and then on New Year's Day, Brent Musburger and Pat Hayden will be in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas for the Notre Dame A&M game, live at 1.30 Eastern Time. 2.41 remaining. Mikowski caught by F. The clock will continue to wind down. Two and a half remaining in the ball game. <laughs> America's new team, huh? <laughs> I think he's had America's old drink. Yeah. Many America's old drinks. Jackson flashed in on that one. <laughs> Ricky Jackson just sitting there. He is right in the middle of your screen. Now watch him drop out on the zone. The snap is already taking place. Watch him drop out now. He's looking outside waiting for someone to come across him. He sees him coming inside. He just moves inside out. Almost picked off the ball intended for Frankie Neal, number 80. Should have the final play of the two-minute warning. Many times a linebacker like that playing zone, they just sort of eyeball the quarterback and watch his eyes and see where he's, you know, focusing his attention, then he'll get to jump on that ball. Caught Frankie Neal. Get out of bounds. That's it. And they will have one more play before the two-minute warning. 2.06 to go, and Sutton drove him out. That's a gain of 18 yards. Can you imagine how Bourbon Street will be tonight? Oh, huh? boy. We ought to stay over. <laughs> <laughs> it's tempting. Yes, and, you wouldn't mind, would you? And we may if this game doesn't get over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 2 6 to go. Caught by Paul Oxaloo. And now we'll have the two-minute warning. With the Saints leading by nine at 33-24 en route to their ninth victory under Jim Mora this season. To those who with a boundless energy and burning spirit live to be the best comes a salute from those of us who live by the same values, the U.S. Armed Forces. I'd go to college. Me yeah. too. If I had the money. Yeah. I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. 
You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. That's a crew from Japanese television, NHK. And this game is being televised live back to Japan. When will it get there? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Take, yeah? <laughs> right now, it is 6 o'clock tomorrow morning in Japan. Is it raining? Who dat? I don't know. I wonder how they tell do it. Tell the story about that, who dat? Started with a song by the Neville Brothers here. Just trying to do a Red Day or a Raft type song. And it became the catchphrase. Well, the thing, who that's going to be so safe? Yeah. Then they went 1-15 and, and record sales fell off. <laughs> Mikowski back. Flag is down. Yeah. Two flags are down. Threw his hat the second time. I like this kid. He's a competitor. Silva threw the flag, then had to throw the hat. 75, offense, illegal use of the hand, decline, intentional grounding, loss of a down, accepted. Original call was on Ken Rutgers. If Jim Moore, as you see in the center of your screen, is not the NFL coach of the year, then nobody deserves it. That's right. a lot. Uh, that's a lot. That the, is a lot. The, the award that's most meaningful to a coach is the one that the other coaches all vote for and decide who gets it. And Jim could get that one. Second. And 32. Kenneth Davis. to the 49-yard line. This is a good offensive line for Green Bay, too. They're big, they're young. Jerry Wampler has done an excellent job with them. What's all that noise? I'm not sure. But I wish it would quit. Third and 20. Woo! That is going to be incomplete. How are Dallas and St. Louis doing? It's been a tight ball game. Let's go to Brent Musburger and find out. All right, Vern. Great bootleg by Steve Pillar here for the Cowboys. It has put them up by eight now. The Cardinals are threatening, however. One other story to update for you. The Atlanta Falcons get the first choice in the draft. They blow to the Lions 30 to 13. Let's go back to Vernon Deck. Who won that? One. One twelve. 112. Having a problem with the microphone. 112 to go. There's some, there's some real fans down there. Vern, I'm seeing more weird outfits now. There's a guy with his head shaved with earmuffs on. Another guy with a gold football helmet on all painted up with a halo on it. <laughs> there's another real saint. You get in your room, we got a little headset problem there. Now we'll try to spare, see if that works. Nobody's taken their shirt off yet. <laughs> no one's jumped off the second deck. How do you like doing play by play? Fourth down and 20, and Green Bay will go for it. Could be the final play of the game. For Green Bay, and the Saints take over.
the celebration is about to begin in earnest. Now, cable sales in this town will be outrageous because they'll wait to watch that game on ESPN tonight, the Rams and the 49ers. City. They're in the playoffs, but they're in as a wild card. Denver wins the division championship. Houston wraps up a wild card berth. They'll play Seattle. They defeat Cincinnati. And we'll have time for maybe one more play. Indianapolis leads Tampa Bay by 18. They will win the AFC East. Especially the people within this organization in the past. Like Bum Phillips and those people, Dick Nolan, they're all excited and happy for the new old same organization. One of our colleagues, Hank Stram. John Mason as well. Yeah. I bet you John Mason's excited. Here it is, the celebration in earnest. Mr. Benson is celebrating. So for Dick Verveal, I'm Bert Lundquist saying so long from New Orleans. The final score, 33-24. Stay tuned for the doubleheader here on CBS. The Bears and the Raiders next. CBS Sports coverage of the NFL will continue after these words to your local station. From the Great Wall to Wall Street, one airline brings our nation's business together throughout the U.S. and 13.